Conlith, a brilliant game of football here, a real Ulster game. Calvin Donegal, 216 to 16 points in the end. How would you sum it up? Look, I think it was a game that Calvin will be bitterly disappointed that they came out on the wrong side of a six-point defeat. There probably wasn't six points in it, but it was Donegal's experience and ability to get goals and probably Calvin will look back to the first half whenever they had the ascendancy. They left 1-4 behind them just before half-time and probably that, that told at the end. And in that first half, it was Calvin that really were the impressive side. They were the best team in that first half. And it went in at half-time, nine points apiece. You would nearly say that they should have been ahead. Yeah, look, they, they were definitely two to three points better team. Um, like Paddy Lynch, you know, really came up where he left off again. Antrim, like he had kicked five points in that first half, three of them from playing, they were brilliant. And even within that, there was, you know, James Smith had a, had a great game and looked really dangerous. And Calvin looked to be on top in a lot of quarters. Paddy McBrady was quiet, Michael Murphy was quiet, and they just looked like they had the matchups absolutely spot on. And, and obviously, when you come down pitch side, you realise the breeze was probably a wee bit more um, heavier than it was in the stand. But they'll look back at that first half and what might have been. And I think those big Donegal players that you're mentioning, they were quiet because they were kept quiet, you know. There, there was a lot of turnovers as well in that first half that was really impressive by Cavan. Yeah, there was. Like, you know, you look at Jason McLaughlin, you know, Patrick Faulkner, you know, they had turned over so much ball. And, like, in dangerous situations where they were exposed man to man. And, you know, it was probably looking at, from a Cavan perspective, they just couldn't get that breakthrough for the goal. And, and whenever um, Sean Patton tipped the shot onto the bar from James Smith, you know, you just wondered was that going to cost them and, and even a point at that stage got them something to hold on to and then they got the first point of the second half and you thought they've started again and then Donegal reeled off five in a row and, and really seemed to break their hearts before they regrouped and went again it was and McKiernan who had a very quiet half by his own standards he sort of suddenly kicked two points from play and it looked like it was game on and, and we were maybe heading for towards extra time yeah, and as you said, we were speaking up in the press box and we were saying that they have to take every chance, Calvin, you know, if they want to win this. And that goal opportunity, it could have been different, I think, if that went in. Yeah, it was massive. And the one Achilles heel they had against Antrim was that, you know, they, they kicked less than 50% of the chances they got over the bar. And today in the first half, they were really efficient coming up to half time, but they didn't score for the last 10 minutes. And look, they had a chance to get 1 4. And the goal would have just been so big. And, and ultimately, if you look at it, Donegal got the goal that kind of brought them four points up and, and it was probably too big a gap because then after that Oren McFadden Ferry at half time suddenly sat in front of Lynch and that was the winning of the game and that's probably why McKiernan and all got more space but like that was probably the biggest switch and the biggest winner in the game that for anybody who wasn't at it probably never noticed on the TV. And goals win games, as we said, you know, it was really impressive. They got two in the end. Patrick McBurdy got the, the second one to really seal the deal for them. Yeah, and look, and that's the thing about Patrick McBurdy and how many times we were talking off air about how quiet he'd been and all of a sudden he pops up and he ends up scoring 1-3 yeah. or 1-4. But again, for me today, it was the bench for Donegal. McGonagall came on at half time for, for Hugh McFadden, who, who got a knock at the throw-in. And I thought he was brilliant. He broke lines. You know, he kept creating space for other players around them. And even he got a great point. Then it obviously it was O'Donnell came off the bench and, and volleyed maybe luckily enough into the net and then da yeah and then Doherty he hits the crossbar near the end so it was the strength of Donegal's bench you know they score one one but they all contributed whereas Calvin brought on subs you know um, that just didn't really get into the flow of the game and, and ultimately that was the difference and Donegal well got a wee bit of scare today their tenth final in twelve years which is just incredible consistency and and they look forward to watching uh, Darian Monaghan next week. I think that was what was most exciting from this game was the bench coming on and making that difference. We've seen it last year with Tyrone and the likes of Colin McShane coming off the bench and, and changing the game and winning the game. Is that what you need now to, to be this winning team? Yeah, it is. And, and you look at Bonner wasn't afraid to take off. You know, the Kieran Thompsons, who had a very good first half, but the minute he went out of the game, you know, he was gone. So they weren't afraid to to throw the changes in Donegal's bench you know when you look at it and the players that didn't come on you know the, the Ethan O'Donnell's the Jack McKelvey's mm -hmm. who through the league had been brilliant you know and they're now out of the mix so the competition for places in Donegal for an Ulster final will be massive and the players that have come in really off the bench like McGonagall will be looking at it now Hugh McFadden will be looking over his shoulder now because McGonagall I thought if there was one player that made a huge impact in the second half it was him And were you overly impressed with Donegal? Uh, I thought they probably started a wee bit flat they got into the group eventually but when you looked at who we talked about who's going to be man of the match and you know Jamie Brennan had scored three points off the bench and there was nobody really stand yeah. out but they just mechanically kept mm -hmm. going through the phases and you know Rick Brady wasn't at his best and he scores 1-3 you know 
there's just so many players. They have match winners everywhere. In the sec, Martin McHugh, Mark McHugh was very quiet, and all of a sudden he sprung to life two or three players, and that's all it takes. And they just have so many players that just know how to win big matches, and, and ultimately that gives them a huge advantage going into a final. We often talk about Donegal, that they don't step up on the big days, that they don't have these consecutive wins and they're consistent. They've now two big wins. You know, they got that big win against Armagh and now against Cavan. Is this the start of something this year for Donegal? Yeah, well, look, it's very hard to say. I have fancied them the last number of years and, and they have came flat. You know, obviously, the Ulster final at Cavan beat them. You know, it was a difficult year. It was a COVID year. There was nobody at it that players injured going into the game. But look, Donegal just looked to be operating on a different level this year. And, you know, the time is running out for some of the more experienced players to really go after another All-Ireland. And, you know, they're in as good a position as any. Um, and I think they have a strong bench. They're in an Ulster final and they're battled hardened. Today, they, f- they flip-flopped a wee bit. They were damned if they did and damned if they didn't today. Everybody expected them to beat Calvin. Mm-hmm. If Calvin run them tight, everybody puts it out marks. But I think Donegal showed enough today that it's going to take a very good performance from either Derry or Monaghan to beat them in a final. Yeah, I was speaking with Declan Bonner there and you couldn't wipe the smile off his face. You know, he's delighted to be back in an Ulster final where he wants to be. As you said, it's either going to be Derry or Monaghan. Who do you fancy? Look, I'll be honest, I didn't fancy Derry to beat Tyrone. I thought... They would run them close, but I didn't know they were enough, but like they were exceptional. They got their matchups right, and they'll not have any fear going into Monaghan, but Monaghan, again, are a hardened Division 1 team. They're at the top end all the time, and, and Jack McCarn, they're probably the most in-forward forward in the country at the moment. So, look, I think Derry have a really good chance of beating them, and, and the hard bit will be you would have to beat Tyrone, then you have to beat Monaghan. I think Derry will beat Monaghan, but then you've done a goal in the final, but look... Will not uh, will not trip over ourselves that far, but I think Derry are in a really good position to maybe get to an Ulster final for the first time in, in quite a while. Yes, absolutely, and it'll be back here in Clonus. It's nice to see the crowds, the buzz about the place. You know, from from being here, from playing here, it's just a, a real championship feel here today. Yeah, there is, and especially when the sun is shining, there's just something special about Clonus, and it's very much like Casement Park in that regard. And you know, it's open when the sun shines; it's brilliant. The roar of the crowd and players love playing here and. When you come to Clonus, you know you're going to get the atmosphere. And look, there was 15,500 in here today. Like, I think next week the crowd probably might be down a wee bit, but for an Ulster final, it'll be a packed house. And it's tough when you walk away from here with the defeat. I spoke with Mickey Graham just there as he left, and yeah, he's very obviously disappointed, I suppose, in the result. He thought that they did really well, you know, that in that first half they were the better team. And he said, look, the, the goals just killed them in the end. And they're going to look to the Talton Cup now. I asked him what he thought on the Talton Cup and he said, look, I'm just happy that we're going to have more football. Yeah, look, I suppose there's a lot of talk about the Talton Cup and how it's marketed and, and how teams will view it. Like Calvin, obviously, are maybe are one of the teams that maybe aren't best suited to the Talton Cup and as far as their players have all won an Ulster Championship which is massive they've won all stars in that year which is massive now you're asking them to go into a competition for losing teams it's very hard mentally for teams to get up for it but look they are where they are I don't think Cavan are probably a team that are best prepared for it mentally you know it's probably the likes of you know Leitrim today you know Antrim will probably take a, a big lift out of that but um, when you look at it Cavan probably are a team who or maybe favourites now to go on and win a competition like that and, and who knows where it can lead but like I'm in favour of players and teams playing at their same level you know if you look at Waxford last week is there any benefit from Waxford getting into the back door and, and maybe drawing to own you know for that to happen again so I think a lot of teams will look at it as a stepping stone to something better um, Calvin are probably in a different space based on, on how good they are and how good they could be but look it's a competition that Mickey Graham obviously now wants to have a go at and I wouldn't bet against Calvin winning the whole thing yeah, and he also said that a lot of people probably didn't expect their performance here today, that they were very much underdogs going in. But he said, I don't think a lot of people thought we'd go out and put it up to Donegal as, as much as we did. Yeah, look, I think early on in the week maybe that was, but there was a real feeling of expectation here in Clonus today. And, and I know the like, Cavan are Division 4 champions coming into Division 3 now, but they're not a Division 4 team. They're not a Division 3 team. You know, they have four or five players that would make the majority of the teams in the first division. So, like for me, you know, the likes of Killian Clark and Faulkner and you know Paddy Lynch in that form, like that's not Division Four form. So, um, I fancied it to be close today. I thought they might needed a bit of a smash and grab, but like they were very good for long periods and they didn't play second fiddle for much of that match. But ultimately, the experience of Donegal playing at a much higher level paid. And whenever Donegal got the chances, they were ruthlessly efficient.
And for Calvin Paddy Lynch is a name that everybody's hearing about. He made his championship debut again at Antrim uh, there last week. And it's brilliant to see a player like that coming on to the, the Calvin team. Um, someone to really watch out for, I think, for the future. Yeah, it is. And, you know, obviously we were all looking after his eight points against Antrim. And you think, well, look, maybe he was playing at that level. You know, maybe Antrim, obviously Ricky Johnson was missing from the Antrim team in the normal full back. Maybe he made hay there. But look, he came out today. Look, Brenton McCool kept Rain O'Neill. Um, scoreless from play and that's a top end division one forward and look he showed today in the first half if there's time and there's space and to put the ball in tell him that he's a serious operator and look he's one that, that Kiavan are going to look to our end of the future And how would you sum up the Ulster Championship so far? Yeah I think look it's the gift that keeps on giving it's another good game here today after last week obviously it was a different type of game last week because it was the All-Ireland Champions and, and for them to be beat so comprehensively it was a shock you know here today it was Division 1 against Division 4, but like Calvin for long periods were the better side and Donegal will look at that and look at where they struggled and that'll give them real bite going into it because they know they didn't perform as well as they could have and it keeps all the players on their toes and it'll give Declan Bonner something to beat the drum for during the week. And just for you personally then, seeing Derry doing so well now, it's nice to, to have these days, these winning days. Yeah, it is and it's funny in Oma where after every game now, kids and, and people looking pictures and pitch invasions, that's something that... I suppose Derry supporters haven't had much experience. We haven't had many of them big signature wins. And last week, to see all the players out in the field taking photographs and um, having that buzz around Derry again, it's there. And I think, like, we'll not get ahead of ourselves, obviously. Just missed out in Division 2. Um, haven't played really well through the league, having a lot of momentum. But I think there's a real buzz about Derry. You know, there's real belief in the players. And if they can replicate that performance again of Tyrone, get their matchups right, which is going to be much harder because obviously Jack McCarran, you know, you have Conor McManage, you have Mohan, you know, you have so many more fires to put out against Monaghan as well, um, based on the players that are on form because they dismantled down very, very easily. So um, it's going to be difficult, but the one thing that, that Gallagher has showed is that he can get his matchups right in Ulster, and if he can get that right again, the guy wouldn't bet against Derry getting an Ulster final. Yes, really exciting few weeks ahead. And for you, you're back in with Koku, you're managing now? Yeah, that's uh, we're back in again now, so we're five, five league games in, so um, we didn't get much time off, but look, that's just the way it, it goes. We were, we were 12 months on the on the road, and now we're, we're back at it again. But look, it's great um, just to get younger players more game time. There's a lot of players maybe nursing injuries and coming back, and, and we don't have to rush them because there's loads of younger players mad champing to get at the bit to get in, and, and you know what? And they've acquitted themselves really well in the first three or four games. Between that and doing punditry, you were telling me that you're training in your local club as well. You must never be off the road. <laughs> yeah, no, look, my wife's very understanding, thank God. So, uh, like yesterday morning, we were at the, the Fila and then um, they were away to the Derry Manor match and here today and under 17 train this morning and Kilku tomorrow night. But look, you know, it's just, it's great to be fit to do it. And uh, on, like I'm the one doing the good stuff. She's at home picking up all the slack. So uh, she deserves all the credit, not me.